What's going on everyone, and what is good? If your sleep hasn't been, then you've come to the right place. Today's video is going to be a big help to anyone suffering from insomnia. This information I'm about to share could correct that issue tonight. And if you're someone that's been a slave to melatonin, then this video is especially for you. Did you know that virtually every melatonin supplement you see in a health store is mislabeled? And I'm not talking about the accuracy of the label. That might also be true though. I'm talking about the lies that the suggested use states on them. In other words, you aren't taking the correct dose for optimal effectiveness if you're just following the label's directions. So why would they lie to us? The real reason is that a scientist from MIT named Richard Wertman discovered that the most effective dosage of melatonin for insomnia was roughly between 300 micrograms and 800 micrograms or in more common units that would be 0.3 milligrams to 0.8 milligrams. In 1995 he was able to patent the dosage. Yeah, seems super sketchy to be able to even do that, right? He actually got the patent to cover anything less than 1 milligram. So when melatonin use started to become a popular thing, many companies wanted in on the fun. So what happened? They made products in dosages of 3, 5, and even 10 milligrams. Now you may be asking, why can they make them so potent? Well, the FDA classifies melatonin as a dietary supplement. It is a hormone, but probably because it isn't toxic at high levels, they decided to put their resources into other things instead of focusing on melatonin. So there are very loose regulations on it. Let me just quick go into how melatonin works. It is a hormone that is naturally secreted by the pineal gland at night and it's actually darkness that induces it. It affects many circadian and seasonal rhythms and even has an effect on our body temperature in regards of day versus night. Just that alone should warn you that messing with exogenous melatonin could be risky. There are tons of potential side effects from taking too much melatonin over a long period of time. Some of these include hypothermia, headaches, depression, stomach cramps, irritability, and grogginess. Throw on top of that the fact that over time you'll probably be altering your normal sex hormone levels, and that applies to men and women. Oversupplementing melatonin has been shown to stimulate the overproduction of prolactin. That hormone is actually supposed to regulate the body's balance of many of the other hormones. Not to mention it's what stimulates breast production and lactation in women. If you are a guy, this should be all you need to hear. You'll be looking at possible low testosterone and sex drive, and ED is also very common with high levels of prolactin. On top of that, kidney and liver problems seem to arise in men with high prolactin. So the moral of the story, I guess, is do what you think is worth it. I don't know about you, but I'd personally like to avoid all of these possibilities. So I'll go over some better options for great sleep. And nowadays, you can thankfully find melatonin in the preferred range with 500 microgram doses. So that should be perfectly fine if you really do love taking melatonin. I'll link one of those products in the description. So, I used to be a slave to melatonin, and I know what it's like to have to constantly up the dosage for it to work. I was able to sleep, but one day I finally realized that I wasn't getting enough deep sleep. This is when I really started my research on melatonin and other sleep supplements. I tried many other things, tryptophan, GABA, 5-HTP, valerian, the list goes on and on. And that's when I discovered glycine, just a simple amino acid that's so easily overlooked. I bought some that day and only took that before bed, no melatonin for the first time in months. I woke up the next morning feeling like I had just hibernated. From that day forth, I never touched melatonin again. Even as time went on, I didn't need to take more, and it consistently still worked. I even started dialing it back a bit, and I found that I only needed to take it about twice a week. And now it's very rare that I'll even take anything for sleep. Now, you don't need to take the pure amino acid like I did. You can also go with bone broth and beef gelatin products, because they're also naturally high in glycine, unlike most other protein sources. I've used those as well and found the same results. You don't even need to take them right before bed or anything like that because your body will retain and pool up amino acids. So I'll leave the links to the pure glycine and a gelatin product that I really like down in the description. I really truly think this video can change your life if you're someone that suffered from insomnia. 
If you liked it, please click that like button and subscribe for more great videos. Also leave a comment about your experience in this matter and if you end up trying a glycine product. I'd really like to hear your feedback. Until next time, thanks for watching.